Look, can we talk for a moment? I need to tell you something. I um, should probably have told you earlier. Well, uh, let's see. How do I tell you this? We're almost at Redcliffe. Did I say how I know Arl Eamon exactly? No, no, I'm not his son. I'm a bastard. My mother was a serving girl at Redcliffe Castle. Arl Eamon took me in and raised me before I was sent to the Chantry. The reason he did that was because... Well, because my father was King Marek. Which made Kaelin my half-brother, I suppose. Ha! Yes, I guess it does at that. I should use that line more often. I would have told you, but... I was inconvenient, a possible threat to Kaelin's rule, and so they kept me secret. I'd never talked about it to anyone. Everyone who knew either resented me for it, or they coddled me. Even Duncan kept me out of the fighting because of it. I didn't want you to know as long as possible. I'm sorry. Why wouldn't he? He was King Marek's best friend. I don't know if that means anything, though. I certainly never considered the idea that it might ever be important. Al Eamon eventually married a young woman from Orlais, despite all the problems it caused with the King so soon after the war. He loved her a great deal. Anyway, the new Arlesa resented the rumors which pegged me as the Arl's bastard. They weren't true, but of course they existed. The Arl didn't care, but she did. So off I was packed to the nearest, just as well. The Arlesa made sure the castle wasn't a home to me by that point. She despised me. Maybe. She felt threatened by my presence. I can see that now. I can't say I blame her. She wondered if the rumors were true herself, I bet. I remember I had an amulet with Andraste's holy symbol on it. The only thing I had of my mother's, furious at being sent away, I tore it off and threw it at the wall, and it shattered. Stupid, stupid thing to do. The Isle came by the monastery a few times to see how I was, but I was stubborn. I hated it there and blamed him for everything. And eventually, he just stopped coming. And raised by dogs. Or I may as well have been the way I... Maybe all young bastards act like that, don't you? All I know is that the Arl is a good man and well-loved by the people. He also was King Kaelin's uncle, so he has a personal motivation to see Loghain pay for what he did. So there you have it. Now can we move on? And I'll just pretend you still think I'm some nobody who was too lucky to die with the rest of the Grey Wardens. Oh, lovely. I'm going to regret this. Somehow I just know it. I thought I saw travelers coming down the road, though I scarcely believed it. Have you come to help us? So you... you don't know? Has nobody out there heard? We heard news about the King and all the fighting. That was before everything started here. We're under attack. Monsters come out of the castle every night and attack us until dying. And dying. Apparently everyone seems to agree that a blight is the perfect time to start killing each other. Marvelous, really. We've no army to defend us, no Arl and no king to send us help. So many are dead, and those left are terrified they're next. Hold on, what is this evil that's attacking you? I, I, I don't rightly know. I'm sorry, nobody does. I should take you to Ban Tegan. He'll want to see you. Ban Tegan, Arleman's brother, he's here. Yes, it's not far, if you'll come with me.
Thomas, yes? And who are these people with you? They are obviously not simple travelers. No, my lord. They just arrived, and I thought you would want to see them. Well done, Thomas. Greetings, friends. My name is Tegan, Ban of Rainersphere. I remember you, Ban Tegan. Though the last time we met, I was a lot younger and covered in mud. Covered in mud? Alistair? It is you, isn't it? You're alive! This is wonderful news! Still alive, yes. Though not for long, if Tern Loghain has anything to say about it. Indeed. Loghain would have us believe all Grey Wardens died along with my nephew, amongst other things. In order to save them, but Caelan risked everything in the name of glory. <laughs> Hardly. Loghain calls the Grey Wardens traitors, murderers of the King. I don't believe it. It is an act of a desperate man. So you are a Grey Warden as well. A pleasure to meet you. I wish it were under better circumstances. You're here to see my brother. Unfortunately, that might be a problem. Eamon is gravely ill. No one has heard from the castle in days. No guards patrol the walls, and no one... The attack started a few nights ago. Evil things surged from the castle. We drove them back, but many perished during the assault. Some call them the walking dead, decomposing corpses, returning to life with a hunger for human flesh. They hit again the next night. Each night they come with greater numbers. With Caelan dead and Loghain starting a war over the throne, no one responds to my urgent calls. Feeling tonight's assault will be the worst yet. Alistair, I hate to ask, but I desperately need the help of you and your friends. It isn't just up to me. Though the Grey Wardens don't stand much chance against Loghain without Arl Eamon. How pointless to help these villagers fight an impossible battle. One would think we had enough to contend with elsewhere. Means more to me than you can guess. Thomas, please tell Murdoch what transpired. Then return to your post. Yes, my lord. Now then, there is much to do before night falls. I put two men in charge of the defense outside. Murdoch, the village mayor, is outside the Chantry. Sir Perth, one of Eamon's knights, is just up the cliff at the windmill, watching the castle. You may discuss with them the preparations for the coming battle. Of course. Hopefully we can find the source and stop it before it causes any more damage. With luck, we'll also find Eamon and be able to help him. I do not know. They seem to be walking corpses, men with rotting flesh that continue to attack even with the gravest injuries. Undead? Spirits possessing the dead. There could be several causes behind such a thing, none of them pleasant. Sir Perth insists. He wants me to be with the villagers, so everyone he needs to protect is in one place. I don't mind, to be honest. The point of all this is to protect the villagers, and I can do that best here. This is the last line of defense, should things go amiss. We could bring some men in to stand beside me, but I'd rather keep the monsters away from the villagers if possible. I have those few who returned from their quest. You know of this, yes. I question Isolde's decision to send so many knights in search of this relic. But I am a practical man, whereas she is a woman of great faith. Sir Perth was one of the knights sent on this quest. Perhaps you should speak to him if you wish to learn more. Very well. Luck be with you, my friend. I'm scared, Mother. One of the... Sorry. Am I bothering you? I'll, I'll try to be more quiet. dragged my mother away. I don't know what happened to her, but I hear her screaming all the time, everywhere. And now my brother Bevan, he, he ran off. I, I don't know where he is. I'm so scared they got him too. He said something about saving mother. He's just there and she's gone. If he has foolishly run off, then he is no doubt dead. You should get used to that fact. Nice. Maybe you want to kick her in the head while you're at it. Shall we comfort her with lies? 
If she is to face death, better she face it honestly. I hope he didn't try to go to the castle. Oh, that would be awful. I went to her house. It's by the square. He wasn't there. Village too. I called and I called, but he never answered. I, I wonder if he ran off into the woods. I'm so worried. Without me, he has nobody. You will. Thank you so much. Please find him. I'm so scared, Father. What are we going to do?